Hi, my name is Mitch Tannenbaum, and I am the Chief Information Security Officer for Cybersecurity LLC and also for Turnkey Cybersecurity and Privacy Solutions. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about ransomware, which is a really hot topic these days. <clears throat> the reason why it's a hot topic is that hackers seem to be really, really focusing on ransomware. You know, um, while there's probably a very small percentage of hackers that are hacking for sport, uh, the vast majority of hackers are hacking for money. That's the reality of it. And so they're going to go wherever the money is. And right now, where the money is, is in ransomware. There are two flavors at a very broad level of ransomware, what I call classic ransomware, or ransomware 1.0, and ransomware 2.0. So first I'll talk about classic ransomware. Classic ransomware happens when uh, a hacker manages to figure out a way into your system, and then they encrypt all of your files. The encryption uh, makes it so that you can't read them. Um, we saw some early versions of ransomware which weren't done very well, and people were able to figure out how to decrypt the ransomware without paying the ransom. But for the majority of the time, you have to pay the ransom if you want your access to your files back. And so that worked pretty well for a while, but people sort of caught on. And what they figured out was that um, if they had good backups, that they really didn't have to pay the ransom because they had their data. You know, the very worst case scenario was they had to go out and buy a new computer and restore their backups. So that didn't really fit in with the ransomer's business model. So they had to come up with a new and improved version of ransomware, what I call ransomware 2.0. And it's no different than a new television set or you know, uh, a new refrigerator, right? You know, people weren't buying enough of them, so they said, hey, we'll, we'll create a, a smart TV you know, so you can, you can get your internet-based stuff on it or a, a smart refrigerator, which will tell you when you're out of milk. Um, and they thought that would sell more refrigerators or TVs. Well, Ransomware 2.0 is pretty effective, and let me tell you, I don't have a good solution for how you go off and mitigate it. I'll talk about that later. But for right now, Ransomware 2.0 does two things instead of just one. So the first thing it does is it encrypts all your files. The second thing it does is it steals all your files so that the bad guys have a copy of your files. And once they have a copy of their files, they say, if you don't pay the ransom, then we'll do one of two things. Either we will embarrass you because there are things in the files that we stole that you probably don't want to be public, or alternatively, um, we will sell it on the black market and make money that way. So it's really good that you have backups, but if you don't pay us, then you'll pay the consequences. That's ransomware 2.0 as opposed to classic ransomware. And we've seen this it was some big law firms for a lot of different places. I'll show you some of them in a minute, but we've seen it in a lot of different places. And it's pretty effective because, you know, depending on what they stole, if they stole something which was private and didn't want to be public, um, you know, then, then that would be a problem. So, you know, we've seen cases uh, where small, relatively small family owned businesses, I can think of one in particular where people would kind of co mingle personal and a business stuff on the same network. And they had photographs, personal photographs on the corporate network. And the other answer said, you know, if you don't go off and pay the ransom, then we're gonna go publish these photographs. So then what do you do? Um, we saw recently a very high profile law firm that um, caters to stars like uh, Lady Gaga and other folks of that uh, profile, and they stole contract data, they stole whatever other data, they didn't say in the details of what they stole, but they said, you know, gee, we want $20 million, and if you don't pay it, then we'll publish all your stuff or we'll sell it. And, and you know, the law firm said basically, go to hell, um, and I said, well, that's great, so now the price just went up to $40 million, and they have started auctioning off some of the data. And they'll probably make a, a fair bit of money, I would think, even if even if the data is purely uh, titillating and doesn't really have it much commercial value, 
they'll probably find buyers for the data. So uh, let's take a look at what one of these groups, I'm gonna share my screen here, um, what one of these groups is doing, and that is the Maze ransomware folks. Uh, they're kind of the folks who, who pioneered this ransomware 2.0. They, they put out a press release, so that's what every good company does when you wanna get some publicity. So they said they're, they're working hard on collecting and analyzing information about their clients. So they're not victims, they're clients. And they're also analyzing the posts post-attack state of the clients, meaning what happened after the clients were attacked and did they pay, did they not pay, how fast did they pay, how, how long did it take them to recover, stuff like that. So, you know, here, this is sort of a veiled threat, but they say, we wanna tell you about what the cost of non-cooperation is and uh, about clients who tried to recover for themselves. So, you know, they're saying, uh, here's, here's a company, and, and they're saying, fair enough, that, that the, their ransomware software cannot be unlocked without uh, help from the Maze team. The encryption algorithm is implemented correctly, and uh, you know, if you don't have their encryption decryption key, you're not gonna do it. Um, it, says, it says that a few companies uh, tried to decrypt the files with the help of side organizations, otherwise known as security firms, and, uh, and that didn't work pretty well, very well, and that's probably true. Um, you know, they said one of these companies spent four times the money, but, but the question is, you know, do you want to uh, give the money to the equivalent of the modern day mafia, or do you want to go off and, and spend the money and, and, and not give them the money because that will discourage them, maybe the theory is, uh, from doing more uh, activities. But there's enough people who pay the ransom that it's probably really not going to have much of a discouraging effect. Plus. Uh, for companies that have insurance, the insurance company wants out of the deal as cheaply as possible. And if, and if, it's, if they think it's cheaper to pay the ransom than uh, you know, mitigate the attack without paying the ransom, then they're gonna push really hard for paying the ransom. Or they're gonna say, um, your coverage is limited to what we would have paid if we had paid the ransom. So, um, But here's the bigger issue, right? It says encrypting the files is not the main risk. If, if the company, and ignore their bad English, who knows whether that's for effect or whether that's legit, um, you know, they're gonna say, you're gonna be down a long pause in your operations. You're gonna be down for a while. Um, but then again, also you have this information leakage problem, especially if it's private information. Um, and we specialize, I love specialists. We specialize in clients' private information, financial information, credit card information, non-disclosure agreements, and all of the information the company has. So, so what they're saying is that, yeah, you may be able to recover your files, but here's the risk of your private information. Um, uh, usually that information will lead to big losses, fines and lawsuits. Um, you know, it's likely that that law firm, that the uh, megastars, um, use they got hacked, you know, they'll wind up on the wrong end of a lawsuit. They'll wind up paying millions of dollars out to their clients. I think that's likely to occur. Um, you know, they claim uh, without substantiating it that, you know, our clients report the average recovery cost, clients, I don't know that they're clients, the clients say the average recovery rate is about $60 million. So, um, you know, maybe yes, maybe no, don't know. Uh, then they talk about you know what happens when you hire negotiators, and a lot of companies do that. The insurance companies will do that. They'll try to ne negotiate the ransom down. So if the ransom is asking for a million dollars, they're going to go try to pay half a million dollars or whatever. Um, uh, you know, they say they say the hackers say that um, you know the ransom the the uh, negotiators are not really on your side. And there's probably some truth to it because they make a commission, right? They're just all about their profits. So, so let's look at a few of the companies that have been attacked um, and what's happened. So ST Engineering is an aerospace firm that makes parts for a large, um, a large number of defense contractors and, and aerospace companies. So uh, they declined to pay the ransom. Um, you know, they have released a little bit of the information so far, 5% they say, uh, and this was just uh, emails. And soon they're going to go off and, and release 
Who knows whether they will? This could just be a threat or a negotiating tactic. Weapons contracts, uh, contracts for alterations of airplanes, uh, for uh, um, first persons, which I assume means like heads of countries, heads of state, uh, contracts with dictatorships, which might not be politically uh, good for to come to surface. That's, that's one example. Uh, another example is a company called Max Linear. Uh, they're an electronics firm. Um, and they got greedy. The company uh, lost the source code. So this is where it's a theft of intellectual property for all of its products and everything they've developed for, for Intel Corporation. Um, uh, and it says, it says, and I don't know if this is true, that they loosed, how do you loose a contract? But they loosed a contract for $400 million with Intel. So, you know, maybe that was the case. Uh, but certainly from an Intel standpoint, they don't want their intellectual property floating out on the web for a variety of different reasons, some of which are, are technical and some of which are security. Um, Conduit is another uh, company um, and, and, you know, they, um, you know, deal with, with, uh, high, <clears throat> high net worth individuals, excuse me. Um, and then that data hasn't been published yet, but these are just some examples. So, um, you know, they're not going to go back and, and list everybody here, but they're going to list some of these people. And, you know, the thing that's important, uh, <laughs> look at that. They even have a feedback form on their website. Um, uh, you know, uh, the, what these guys are doing is they're in the business of extortion. And what they're doing here, in part by making these company names public, is increasing the pressure on these companies to pay them a ransom. Here's the last little dip. This is one of the most recent ones that I've seen, which is LG. Um, and they develop whatever they developed, uh, probably, I'm guessing, firmware for phones. Um, and their client was AT&T and uh, these guys stole all the source code. So, um, you know, all that is really bad. And, and really the only good way to protect yourself against ransomware 2.0 is to keep the bad guys out. So if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. Otherwise, thanks for spending time with us. Uh, stay safe and come back for another uh, short webinar. Thanks.